not 31. I had a question on how you do number 61 here. So I thought we would take a look. So they give you this cost function and they say the cost in dollars of making X items is given by this function. So let's just get a couple of things under our belt. Let me scooch this up a bit. Um, so here we go. So C, right, that's our, our dependent variable. That's like our Y variable, but this is cost. And I'm going to assume that it's in dollars because they said it's in dollars. And X is our independent variable like it usually is. And this is just the number of items that we've made, right? So number of items made. So if we take a look at our cost function, it's basically the slope of a line because you can see this is of the form Y equals MX plus B. Right, so I see my y-intercept here at 500. I see my slope of 10. If you wanted to interpret the slope, you can think of 10 as the number 10 over 1, and the units are dollars per item, right? Because we have the x variable down here in the denominator, right? And we have the y variable up in the numerator, and we just said the y units are dollars, and the x units are the number of items made. So just taking a quick unit analysis, right? If I just look at the units here, this is telling me for every, let me change pens here, for every one item made, it's gonna cost me 10 more dollars. So that's just, before I even get going, taking a look at what this means. But part A says, figure out what the fixed cost for this item is. And fixed cost means I'm not making anything, right? I'm making zero items, but I still have to put out some money. And maybe fixed costs are like rent or insurance or something like that. But when they talk about fixed cost, again, there's an implication here that X is equal to zero, all right? So no items are being made, but I still have to spend money. So you see me, and let me erase this just a little bit. So you see me going ahead and I put in zero for X and I substitute that and I find a Y value or really technically a C value of 500. So that's where I'm getting that the fixed cost is 500. And for part B, they say, what's the cost of making 25 items? Well, again, 25 items, if you look at that, that is an X value. So you see my work here, and this time, I, instead of putting zero in for my X value, I put 25 in, I got 750 back out, the units on that are dollars, and that's why you see that solution there saying the cost of making 25 items is $750. Now the last part, they, they set you up a little bit differently in part C. They don't give you an X value to start with. They actually give you a cost to start with. So they started me with $1,500, right? They said, suppose the maximum cost allowed is $1,500. So what are the domain and the range of the cost function? Well, if I have a Y value, or I guess technically in this case, a C value, a cost value, I can solve for X here. And again, don't forget that once I solve for X, the units on this are 100 items. Right? So if I make 100 items, it's gonna cost me $1,500. So we have to figure out what the domain and the range are. So let me change pen colors again. Don't forget domain, right? It's always your X values, right? And your range, we would say are Y values, but for this particular problem, let me get my eraser. We don't have the letter Y anymore. We have C values, right? Cost values. So let's see what our possible X values are. So if my max budget is $1,500, all right, and that allows me, if I want, I could make 100 items. That means I could really make anywhere between zero items and 100 items. That's, that's what I'm allowed to make because I'm allowed to spend up to $1,500. And keep in mind, we've already mapped this out. If you make zero items, that's going to cost you $500. And if you make 100 items, that's going to cost you $1,500, which is why I have those values for my domain, zero to 100, and for my range, 500 to 1500 and keep in mind right the units on this are numbers of items and the units on this little bad boy are dollars all right so that's how we do 61 thanks so much guys bye